there's a proposal that's before us right now for a mandatory data retention scheme. And this is, a, I think, a really beautiful context for the bill that's before the Australian Parliament at the moment. Because if the government were in alliance with a country that had built um, that profoundly invasive surveillance apparatus that's just vacuuming material up as rapidly as it's created, the last thing you would want would be for service providers, uh, phone companies, service providers, uh, internet companies here in Australia, not to be storing that material so that it can be collected in the first place. Um, so that, I think, is one of the key drivers, A, behind the government's uh, reluctance to discuss its actual reasons for doing it, um, and B, for the, the rapid haste with which it's proceeding. Though the stuff is shrouded in the language of national security, a lot of it is about um, protecting massive commercial interests, and Australia is not immune from that at all. The line that this is all about national security is designed, as John was saying, to keep parliamentarians in the tent. Nobody wants a bombing or an attack on their watch. Nobody in the Greens wants that. Nobody in Labor or the Coalition want that. Now, under that fear of terror, which is what terrorists do, that's their entire um, rationale for the strategy, all these other things are thrown under that shroud. Yeah, so uh, ACES bugging these Timorese uh, cabinet rooms to kink a commercial gas negotiation. I don't know, maybe that's what you're talking about. Nothing to do with national security. No, that's about helping an Australian gas major um, rip off one of the poorest countries in the region. But if you try and go into that, you will immediately hit the shroud of national security. So it's a blanket of uh, a very broad scope thrown over the core of a legitimate argument. You know, our intelligence agencies exist to protect people from blowing up buses in public places. And I don't know that anybody here would oppose their existence, or maybe some people would. But under that important core of a mission, which, you know, those powers are very tightly constrained in a democracy under rule of law, the shroud gets thrown. And we've seen just how invasive that shroud is in the United States. And if here, if anything, it's worse because politicians of the major parties are terrified of saying anything that would have the White House give them a call saying, why did you say that? Um, my question is to Senator Rodman. Um, Please call Scott. Scott. Some, um, bill doesn't get passed. Um, do you reckon that the government's going to do what it always does, which is to make these deals with the senators, uh, as we've seen last year when they failed to pass their unfair budget measures? Do you reckon that they're going to make the same approach if this bill fails to pass yeah. as a team? They'll definitely try. Notice how spectacularly unsuccessful they've been, how we managed to protect higher education and uh, public health and a whole bunch mm. of other stuff because of cash. Yeah. Right. Well, we've got the mic because we're just about to close out. Um, this is happening in Glebe. Did everybody get one of these on their chair? Awesome. Okay. Please bring people along. Um, the meaning of metadata. Phil Dorling was um, the the uh, confident of Julian Assange who printed a lot of the amazing WikiLeaks material. Sam Castro from WACA is just a kick-ass activist who does a lot of really valuable stuff down in Melbourne on this and other issues. The meaning of metadata presented by George Brandis. Um, so please come to that.